why not? Let's play with different lighting, different background. Um, I'll bring this up a bit, pardon the shot. But I want to share with you this concept because if it's about being authentically present, what does that take? Welcome back to the Magic of Artist. I um, came back from the walk and I talked about the super soup I made for the boys. Here it is. I think it needs a little bit more salt, so I'm going to add that and then I'll take you downstairs. And we'll have a conversation about standard. What's our standard? Uh, this is my standard soup when, when health is just not all there for us. Um, and I'll give you the ingredients to the soup toward the end of this video so that you, in case you need it, you can write down the list of items that I throw in. Um, and then that'll do it, you know? That'll give you a sense of, let me see, I gotta just check. You can probably get a preview of what it is that I throw in here. Um, just need a little bit of a taste because I feel like there's a bit of salt missing. Mmm, just a smidge more. Not much. Plenty of spices in here. Yeah. That'll do it. Let's just mix this up. So, you know, you could probably get, start some guessing as the visuals, as I stir this. Good amount of veggies in here. Not too much though, you know, gotta make enough broth. It's the, the, the liquid, liquid magic that's affected here. And then this is what we sip on and slurp on to bring fevers down, kill viruses, and strengthen the immune system. All right. There it is. Let's call it my super stew. Or super soup. Super soup. Super soup is a lot more fun. and It kind of... It's a good tongue twister. Super soup, super stew. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to keep it warm. I'm going to have my bit um, later. For now, I'm going to just finish my dirty chai. Made some dirty chai to have a little conversation with you guys. So, let's go for a ride. Yeah? Cool. Just hang tight here. Okay. Pardon the extreme close-up. Here we go. All right. So standard. So this standard of soup I'm talking to you about is um. You know I've been I've been sick many times in my life. Um, pardon. There we go, guys. And. You know, being sick is something that is never fun, never fun to have to deal with. But it tell you what, anyone out there that's a parent knows this is true. When your kid gets sick, or kids, there is uh I'd rather be sick than my own kids, that's for sure. That would be the ideal, is if I'm sick and not not the kiddos. So uh, let me just set this up real quick so we could have a little chat about this standard situation. <sighs> All right. Well, cool. Well, that's a little bit on the crooked side, isn't it? Gotta like lean this way. So, my friends, standard of what we do is well, there's two sides of it, right? There's the technical technical side of our standard, like, you know, I brought you into the studio, there's lights, and here, I'll show you the studio. Why not? It's not anything too grandiose. I mean, hey, I even have a holy ceiling from leaks. And there's a desk, some notes, some lights, more lights, and then, of course, we have our wall here. And this wall takes on many colors and textures depending on what we're filming for auditions and such. So it's always a versatile thing. 
Now, I was intentional today about filming with this camera because I wanted you to to know this is, you know, kind of, I try to keep this standard with filming tapes, auditions, even when we do a, some of our vlogs and such for our other YouTube channel. It just, it helps to have a certain quality and, get, you know, I think that just builds confidence. And then that confidence gets projected out. So yes, I am talking about a technical standard, but I'm also talking about a standard of, of work, a standard of approach to the, to, the, to the work we do. And so I usually call this the standard of creative flow. What's your standard of creative flow? That's just very fancy. I just, it's a fun word. It's a fun thing that I just, it just kind of came one day, you know, speaking to one of my mentees. It's just, what's my standard? And really what it's about is just, am I present? Am I in my authentic self being present in my auditions, in my tapes, in real life, in my day-to-day -day life? You know, and, and there's all kinds of hindrances to being able to be our authentic self. Now, I know that um, that is a whole lot easier said than done, and there's nothing more aggravating than, than hearing a casting director or an agent give you a note if you do a workshop or if you send in a tape, and they're like, look, we just want a little bit more of you. <laughs> that, that can get pretty frustrating if you're like, what, 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 does, what does that even mean? Now, there's, there's a lot of trainings out there, a lot, of, a lot of approaches to this craft that really, really empower us to, you know, to, to kind of get that right. So, um, I, I think it's important to, to note that it's, uh, it, it's not this, like, it's not easy. I know it's not easy. And, sorry, I'm not terribly satisfied with the way this looks. So, just bear with me as, as I figure out my standard to talk to you. See? Um, so... Let's put this here. Why not? Let's play with different lighting, different background. Um, I'll bring this up a bit. Pardon the shot. But I want to share with you this concept because if it's about being authentically present, what does that take? Right? What does that take? And I mean, you know, a lot of people say you have to train for years. Some people say, well, no, when I put on a character, it's a different person. You know, you, you look at the Daniel Day Lewis's and we can have all kinds of debates on that, um, which I'm open to. So let's drop them in the comments. Let's talk about, you know, the, the, the standard of creative flow is me becoming a different character, me com completely becoming somebody else. That's that definitely one way to look at everything. Or... It's also, yeah, like I said, the standard of, of lighting, the, the way you film something, right? Those, those are different standards. I'm taking these off because I realize there's a glare and I'm aware of all these things. Mm. So I'm drinking a dirty chai. Um, I made a, I had a little bit of coffee left from earlier and some chai tea. Chai is just good for the immune system. And I, I like it because it actually looks, here, I'll show you a little bit here. It looks actually dirty. I don't know if you can't see it. I've, I've already drank too much. Let's see. And now, can I get it to focus there? Come on, camera. You could do it. I believe in you. Come on, let's show the people the coffee. I mean, the chai. Dirty, dirty chai. There it is. Boom. So, um, I, <laughs> I'm very new to this dirty chai concept. Uh, it's quite exciting because it's the best of two things I love, which is coffee and chai and it's funny because um you know uh chai tea saying chai tea was kind of fixed by by the whole notion of uh what was it spider-man across the spider-verse a character said why <laughs> the i think it was the indian spider-man made a comment about that like why do, why do people say chai tea if chai is tea in um hindi i think it is correct me if i'm wrong it's a language from india i apologize if it's not hindi but Chai tea is like saying tea tea. So anyway, tangent, sorry, back to track on standard, standard of our approach to the work we do. I was taking these off. Man, it's, it's just, you know, sometimes when, when we're, we're doing the work we do, we film and we watch our tapes back and there are times where it just feels effortless. We watch it back and it's like, this is it. This feels like someone's watching something they sh that they shouldn't be watching. In other words, you're, you're watching someone be very, be very private in public. Um, you know, 
those kinds of things I've heard from different places and different people. And it just, it reminds me of some of the best stuff I've ever seen, you know, some of the best movies and performances on, on screen, whether they're on my phone or in the big screen, that it just sometimes feels like we're watching something we're not supposed to be watching because it's so private, right? So that's what I'm referring to. Where's our standard? Have I ever discovered that standard? When did I stop performing? And when did I just stop start showing up to just be present, to just be authentically me as, you know, fill in the blank, any, any character that we take on? And this, you know, this starts from the, the audition process. It starts there. Um, I mean, I say that and I'm, I'm even hearing myself and I, I think it's, it, it really does start in our everyday life. You know, I, I tell my mentees all the time, you know, where's your journal? Do you journal every day? And some people don't like to journal. You know, I, I have a journal for, I think I have like six journals, one for different kinds of things. And I've got this one here. I've got another one. Hang tight. I've got another. Here, I'll show you. This is a. Uh, I do not. I do not exaggerate when I say I have more. I probably have more than six now that I'm counting. Um, this is one. One journal, that I've recently started um, about travel, adventure. I mean, kind of look the world, right? Uh, this one's completely full. That one is done. I mean, this one is complete. And I journal write every day and my journal continue my journal writing continues to evolve because it's just the whole intention of journal writing is to become a lot more present, a lot more aware of my everyday. It's something that I started with the artist way. Um, some of you out there might already know what that is. The artist way by Julia Cameron started me on writing um, through a class I did in Orlando. But you know, it's evolved, way evolved since then. Um, I currently am writing in, in a different way where it's a, a little bit more declarations and affirmations, revelations, very inspired by Matthew McConaughey, the way he writes in his journal. Um, but look, more, more and more. Um, you know, it's just, I write notes, I write, I mean, here it says writer's log, teacher's log, director's log. It's, it's, um, it's very important, you know. I, I have the visual of, I think it's the movie Forever Young with Mel Gibson. There's a, there's a scene there with the scientist who creates the this mechanism that freezes very famous people i believe it is or freezes people in general that can afford to freeze it and it, i remember the scientists had a, a shelves and shelves of these um composition notebooks filled with notes and anyway so journal writing is is one of the things that gives me a place to land with my thoughts the way i recollect the day or recall on the day and I, i'm probably writing at least tw twice a week, at the very least. And so what about you? Is this something you do? do you, maybe you do you sketch. Some people write, some people sketch to just put their thoughts down, their reactions down to life. You know, becoming aware of how we feel is truly important. And then the standard of creative flow, being able to be present, your true authentic self be present. You know, when you deliver that on a tape, it's because the characters come fully alive through the way that we are, through the way that we exist and fill the space of our lives. And so therefore, when we fill the space of this frame, you know, it's sometimes, it's it's difficult to not want to play to what's being asked for. How do we avoid that? How do we avoid playing to what's being asked for? Hmm? Well, how about we eliminate fear? Eliminating fear. Now, a lot of what I say some people may be like, you know, this is a lot of philosophy, but I mean, can you apply any of the stuff you're saying? Yeah, you can. You can. Um, so the magic of artists, the, the, to be a magic of artists is completely dependent on faith. See, the way I have learned to truly enjoy this vocation, this career, is to realize I am a vessel, I'm a conduit of the great creator. I'm simply creating and telling stories that I'm, I'm being inspired to, to tell, to be participant of. And most often than not, the full, fullest extent of that is the audition. And so the audition has to become something more. And in order for it to become something more, I have to become less afraid. I have to become less ambitious when I'm just chasing 
or rather running away from a fear and it and the fear of what the fear of being accepted of being picked of being approved um you know but wanting to validate myself um if any of those things are going on with you then we we got to get rid of that right we have to find the joy in in creating an audition creating discovering a character we have to find the joy of it all and i know it's a lot easier said than done so how do you do it well you got to treat every audition like an opportunity, like you're meeting someone, you know, someone you've never met before, someone that needs your help. How many of you out there, and if you're on this channel and you're hanging out with me, you you are most likely um, sensitive to wanting to help, wanting to serve. Uh, I think anyone that's in this career for pure ambition or fame and fortune, um, if that's your only drive, I don't know how much it'll stick around in this channel. I certainly hope you will regardless because I'd love to hear your thoughts and we can exchange thoughts. But, you know, I, I think the ultimate call is to serve. And when we can come at it from a place of love, a place of faith, where what I'm doing is genuinely to, as if you're inviting this person into your space and you're saying to them, hey, have a seat. Uh, let me, here, let me, get you, let me get you a cup of dirty chai. Do you like dirty chai? And you just start talking to them. Start meeting them. You start finding out about them. Because ultimately, at the end of this conversation, we're going to be given a task. The task is to step into their shoes for a day at least. The day that you're filming, I mean. you know, And you're going to honor their life with the lighting that you can set up to really kind of enhance that story of theirs, that moment of theirs with the person on the other side or persons on the other side. And you use whatever space you have, whatever sound equipment you have, and you tell their story. That's it. That's all we can do. And it's a, that's the most that we can do. And, and the important thing is to not hold back. Do it with purest love and passion. You know, and within the context of whatever character it is you're playing, right? And you get creative based on what we know about the character and their circumstances. And then we take what we know about ourselves. And mind you, if you're journaling every day, checking in with yourself in some way or another, you know, receiving the moment to moment stuff that's happening in your life, it's going to be easier. It'll be simpler to bridge that gap between who this character is and who you are. And so therefore the confidence you have going in will really help you serve. And if the person you're playing is not as confident, well, guess what? That's okay, because the confidence you have is going to give you the courage to put it down for a little while, to become more afraid, like they are afraid, to become more intimidated if they're more intimidated, you know? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's kind of it. That's the standard. That's the standard of creative flow. Do you know what yours is? I feel like sometimes I hit mine. I find it. It's a groove, you know? It's kind of like when jazz musicians they just find, they get their flow and they're just in a different zone. Or musicians in general. Oof. You know, I've been to two concerts now recently in the last couple of years. And you can see it when the artist is just in it. And they're just, their eyes are closed. And whew, it's just a, it's a different realm. Yeah, so it's that creative flow, that state of flow. <clears throat> so yeah, maybe meditation. If that's something you don't do, take it on. Prayer, meditation, actually sitting in silence for at least five minutes. That helps. Uh, calling on this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of the Creator, of our Father, to, to kind of settle you, give you stillness. Um, and we got to take care of ourselves, take care of our mind, our bodies. But anyway, I think that's how we start paving the path to discovering the standard, standard flow. It, it makes our career a lot more exciting when we're not just playing for the sake of what the casting director wants. <clears throat> Excuse me, obviously, knowing what their parameters are and, and what they require. You, you have to pay attention to those technical notes. And you deliver that. You show them. You could deliver that. You know, you show them the professionalism of your lighting as best as you can. That's part of your standard. But also your standard of who, who we are, who you are. Put that on tape and they'll remember you. And then eventually there's going to be a role that's just yours. That was always yours. And then you'll get it. And that, that's when it really starts. That's when it really begins. So cheers to that. I need some water. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave any comments, questions below. <coughs> like Jose, go get some water. 
clearly this is drying up my throat. So anyway, you guys are awesome. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, well, I guess who almost forgot to give you the ingredients to the soup? <laughs> Me. Sorry, guys. Okay. So as promised, thanks for sticking around. If by any means, please remember, I'm <clears throat> not a doctor or anything like that. This is just what really helps me and my family. <clears throat> um, so the throat thing, this is a proof that I've only recently, I just, I literally clicked record and then I unclicked it and I was like, oh my goodness, um, I forgot to talk about the soup. <laughs> so the ingredients of the soup, you can maybe grab your journal now if you want to write this down or your, maybe your phone, grab your phone and we will, um, you know, if you need the standard of <laughs> healthy soup. And, you know, please share with me your, your standard. What, what, do you, what kind of soup do you make when you're not feeling well? Do you make soup? Do you even know how? I mean, I use that pressure cooker. And it's, it's lovely. I just put in the frozen chicken in. But actually, that's one of the last things I do. Chicken goes in last. Um, I start with a little bit of avocado oil. Then um, I grinded some, um, I grated rather, I grated the uh, some ginger, about two pieces of a root, <coughs> ginger root. Then some garlic, two teaspoons of garlic. Um, then red onions, like those, whew, I mean, if you've ever cut red onions, you know what I'm saying. They burns, it burns well, burns good. And so that goes in about half, half of a red onion. And after the red onion, I um, put in some shiitake mushrooms, then red potatoes. Now, <clears throat> recently, I discovered that red potatoes are, the skin, the darker it is, it has a little bit more antioxidants. So obviously I go toward the more richer red potato. So I cut cubes, more, more like triangles, you know, whatever shape that is. It looks like a triangle, like a cube. Yeah, anyway. I cut those up, put them in there as well. Oh, some asparagus. And I think that's all I did this time. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. I've I've tried putting rice before, then it gets gets too mushy and I didn't like that. So I really wanted to be like a soup, like a like a just a very good liquidy soup, right? I'm trying to make this like healthy liquid magic stuff that just really boosts the immune system. And so I put that in, then I pour all, well, I put the chicken in, it, it wasn't completely defrosted. Organic chicken, preferably, obviously, if, if you can. Then I put, you know, fill the, the pressure cooker. I put like maybe five or six cups of water, maybe seven. I mean, the thing is, it's a big pressure, pressure cooker. Pressure cooker, <laughs> that's fun to say. And, and that's it. You know, I put all the spices that I can. I put in uh, your basic onion powder, oregano, um, one of those like all seasoning festivities. I just put that in there. I, um, I already told you I had the, the onion, the garlic, like the actual, you know, uh, substance. And I had some paprika powder, some, I added a little bit of curry, a little bit of turmeric. So again, the goal is to lower inflammation. And so then I mix it all up. I add some salt, and as you saw, I had to retouch on the salt because I don't want it to be too salty. So I just add enough to give it flavor. And that I did toward the end. And that's it. I put it on for about 16 minutes on the pressure cook. And then I do a quick release of the pressure. And it's ready to serve. And it's, the boys loved it. And we'll probably have a second serving here very, very soon. So I promised the, um, the ingredients. And there they are. And same thing with the standard of creative flow. Um, I will be, you know, breaking those down even more. How, how do you find your creative flow? What are the steps that we can take? There, I mean, as many people as are on this earth, as many actors are they are on this earth, a lot of them will be similar, but every, everybody has their own approach, right? We can give you all these ideas as, as coaches and mentors and teachers out there, and you're going to find your own. And that that's the beauty of it. We'll, we'll kind of give you, we like to give our, our mentees like the bones of, you know, the approach of that we took, and then you take it and making your own and you discover things that are um, profound, you know? So that's exciting. Same thing with soup. It's the same kind of thing. You're still going to find some pretty spectacular treasures all on your own. Um, and therefore, you discover your own standard and your own approach to this whole beautiful roller coaster ride. 
So, all right, promise kept. Now you have the ingredients. Um, let me know what you do for soup. Maybe you keep it a lot simpler than I do. That's totally fine. Sometimes you don't need all that stuff, but let me know what it's your standard for soup. And if you already know, what's your standard of creative flow? What's your, what do you do to just get truly present in the moment? Whether it's in life or whether it's for a self tape, you know, an audition. What do you do? Share it with us if, if you're so willing. Take care and I'll see you in the next video of The Magic of Artist. Bye.